Hey guys, Jim Vanoski with Manufacturing Talks here. Hey, we got a great show for you today. So this one's going to be one of our most informative ones ever. We've got Simeon Wallace and Adam Beckerman from Aprio. So to tell you who those guys are, I'm just going to read it out. They're a CPA-led advisory firm with deep expertise, with over 700 clients in the manufacturing and distribution practice. And Simeon is their chief investment officer. He's also the leader of their Aprio Wealth Management Practice, and then Adam is Manufacturing and Distribution Industry Practice Leader and Assurance Partner at Aprio. So these guys are going to be here to dive into a quarterly report that they do that digs into all things from an economic perspective and a performance perspective that's going on in the manufacturing world that you guys need to be aware of. So again, very informative. We'll have Adam and Simeon joining us here shortly on Manufacturing Talks. Stay tuned. Welcome to Manufacturing Talks with Jim Vanosky. Industry has a million cool stories, and Jim talks to the movers and shakers who are making them happen. Let's dive in. We YS Media, your digital media relations agency, public relations, website design, digital marketing. You get found by the customers and talent who need your solutions. You get media placements in top publications, the best job candidates coming to your website, a digital presence that gets you found by the right people. Call 616-298-8798 to get started today. Okay, welcome back to Manufacturing Talks. I'm Jim Vanosky, your host. As always, thanks to DYS Media, our sponsor. Look them up. They'll do a great job for you in the PR world. And we've got a very informative show today. This one's been one I've been working on for a while. Um, we've got the guys from Aprio Wealth Management. They're a, a consultancy down in Atlanta. Um, Adam Beckerman and Simeon Wallace are here with us. Let me bring them on. Hello, guys. Hey, Jim. Hi, Jim. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Thank very you. well. Very well. Excellent. So Adam, you are the manufacturing and distribution leader and assurance partner there at Aprio. Simeon, your chief investment officer, correct? That is correct. correct. Okay. That's so you correct. guys are new to the show. Um, what I wanted to do first is have each of you go through kind of brief background, how you got doing what you're doing and what it is you do for Aprio. And then we'll start digging into uh, the topic of the show, which is your quarterly manufacturing and distribution insights report. Sound good? Right. Works for us. All right. Let's start with you, Adam. Tell us a little bit, uh, bit about yourself. Sure. Sure. So I've, I've been with Aprio almost 20 years now. And uh, throughout my career, I have uh, partnered with manufacturing companies and stakeholders, uh, you know, working with them to, uh, you know, help them grow their business and, uh, you know, keep themselves out of, out of trouble and, and, you know, help them grow their bottom line. Excellent. And Simeon, how about you? Sure. So uh, I'm the chief investment officer, which means I set our investment strategy. And in doing that, I'm very close to what's going on in the economy and what's going on in the financial markets. And really started looking at manufacturing and distribution about 20 years ago when I came out of, out of Wharton. Uh, the first job I had was as, a, as an equity analyst studying the automotive and, and supply chain for the entire automotive industry. So it's the supply chain through the retailers, as well as the OEMs. And from there, over my career, I've covered a number of different segments within manufacturing. So we're thinking about aerospace and defense and things like chemicals and the like, uh, and really developed a love of, of the industry. Did a lot of plant tours, a lot of walks, a lot of lean management uh, that went through it. So that's been the journey for the last two decades. Great. And so I, I do have to say this, guys, I've been doing this show for over two years now. Um, up to like episode 78, I believe this is. And you guys have the coolest background ever. <laughs> <laughs> so so business must be okay there at Aprio. Um, specifically, what is it Aprio does? And then how did you get into this particular vertical? Adam, why don't you lead us off? Sure, absolutely. So you know, Aprio is a uh, CPA-led professional advisory firm. And uh, you know we work with clients in obviously the manufacturing distribution practice, but also in professional services, real estate, technology, um, and how we ultimately got to this uh, quarterly insight was 
this is a firm that has always been looking, you know, to help our clients, right? I, I mentioned my opening about increasing their bottom line, uh, helping them grow. And so for us, uh, you know, adding these insights on a quarterly basis is just, you know, absolutely part of what, uh, you know, what we do and, and how we approach our, our, our clients. Excellent. And this is your second installment of the insights then, is that right? We've been doing these on a quarterly basis for about two years, two years now. At this point. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just late to the game is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're just getting better about getting it out there. Well, good. I'm glad to help you with that. Um, and so I think there's some really cool stuff. I want to dive into this latest one that just came out. Um, to me, looking at kind of the top line of this one, it feels like there's some pretty positive news in the manufacturing world. Would you guys agree with that take on this one? We would. And what the way to think about it is um, coming out of COVID, we essentially had uh, supply chains disrupted. And usually the economy overall works in a relatively uh, regular way in terms of how the parts of the economy are expanding and growing around the same time. And COVID has been different because of the shutdowns. We ended up having a real boom in technology and the goods related economy, which manufacturing ties into and a lot of distribution. And then as we opened up, all of those experiences that we couldn't do that were face to face on the services part of the economy started to essentially take a lot of the demand in the goods world uh, away from it. And so we've been through the better part of essentially a recession in manufacturing and distribution over the last 18 months, same thing with technology, because we were on the backside of that boom. And now we see that we're really moving out of that real recession that we've had essentially within manufacturing distribution, not equally, but in general, we're kind of coming out of the, the troughs of it. And that's what's behind the optimism. Okay. So, well, obviously that's very good news. I know things have been a little dicey overall economically. So um, manufacturing, you know, being a leader in the, uh, world and American economy. Uh, that's definitely great news. So Adam, are, in your perspective, are there particular aspects of this report that pop out as kind of leading that positive news? Yeah, as I, as I look through this report and kind of adding on to, you know, what Simeon is saying, uh, you know, we saw, you know, during COVID and post COVID a rise in, in, in everything, all costs. And, and, you know, in this report, what we're seeing is a you know, cost coming back to a more manageable level. So number one, take a look at the uh, the truck and freight costs, right? Everybody saw how significantly they increased. And now they're coming down to, I believe in, in the report, we mentioned historically low levels. And so that has been, I, th I think manufacturers are, you know, at a point now where they're taking a deep breath and saying, okay, things are starting to somewhat normalize again. And we can focus on, you know, the, you know no more of the craziness of running the business uh, just the normal craziness of, of running a business. That's right. I, I'll add to that. Uh, about two years ago, when we anticipated inflation starting to become an issue, we created an inflation dashboard that we would use to observe what was going on across a variety of different input costs, whether it's um, agricultural, energy, um, or, or labor, or different types of commodities. And in sharing that internally, we received a lot of positive feedback from Adam and some from others who work hand in hand with a lot of our manufacturing clients. And one of the things that we, we had in that report or the dashboard is we looked at where were prices currently relative to their three year high. And when we looked at the, that for this most recent report, we see in many areas, uh, a lot of these costs are somewhere between 25 and 80% down from those three year peak levels. You know, shipping costs are, are a great example of that when you look at container costs coming from Asia back to the US, how far those have declined back to more normalized levels. But it's, it's really across a lot of the, the spectrum, things like energy costs as well have come down. And so we all see the, the benefits of that for manufacturing clients where it can be multiple input costs that, that they have to deal with. So the other thing that I wanna point out is it was also a couple of years ago that we met each other and that was at the Next Generation Manufacturing event down there. In, Atlanta. And at that time, we were in the doldrums of the supply chain nightmare. And you made the prediction on stage that things were going to normalize and slowly work their way back to uh, a more standard outlook. And, and you were 
spot on. That's exactly what happened. So <laughs> folks, where we are. definitely spot listen to Simeon that. when he speaks. Yeah. I will say that's the beauty of capitalism is that it, it forces everybody to adjust because we have the right incentives in place. Yep, agreed. Yeah, it's kind of self self correcting. Um, as you look at the report, you know, one thing that popped out to me is is a uh, um, number one on your list was the ISM index. The Institute for Supply Managers have the monthly kind of survey that indicates people's mood about uh, different aspects of the manufacturing and supply world, and that's still indicating contraction 49 um being the overall rating under 50s contraction so that's a little bit of a um negative on the report how do you guys read that i know it's been recovering it was down yeah. lower than that but what's your read on that particular piece so we look at it in two ways so as you alluded to if it's above 50 it signals expansion if it's below 50 contraction that's the first part of it but then we also look at well essentially what's the direction and the trend where things are headed and no one month is a trend. So you have to look at really over multiple months. And when you look over multiple months, essentially what it's saying is that things are getting less worse or you know they're not quite expanding, but they're getting a whole lot less worse. And for us, that's a sign of optimism because it means that we've troughed and we're getting to a better place. We can always have some regression. I mean, that's always a possibility, but generally we think this is a sign that from a demand supply perspective, we're getting things matched up a lot better than where they were during the real uh, high points of, of the supply chain crisis. So for us, it's saying, okay, we're moving in the right direction and that's the positive and we can be optimistic even if we're still going through that contraction where we're sub 50. And, and I think well, that's the sentiment, oh, sorry. I think that's the sentiment what I'm, I'm hearing from our clients is, you know, they see that trend upward. And so they're, they're over, overall, I'd say positive on where things are going. One thing that kind of leaped out to me as a big positive was the um, input prices. And I know we talk about kind of generally speaking in the consumer world that inflation is cool, but prices are still going up, right? Whereas um, in your report, and I've read elsewhere as well, that input prices for manufacturers have actually in a lot of cases dropped, actually gone negative. So that's got to be a huge boost to our providers out there, right? It is. The... When we're starting to even read stories about people are starting to use the word um, either disinflationary or deflationary, mm -hmm. that is what's happening in a lot of input uh, costs. And if you think about when you have constrained supply and you have some demand, that forces prices to come up. But because capacity has expanded, whether it's labor capacity or just getting uh, shipping capacity correct, a, a lot of areas where you did have that constraint uh, we've seen relief there. And as a result, prices have come down across a number of different areas. And this is part of that, that normalization coming out from the, really multiple years of post-COVID and, and the shutdowns. Uh, we're getting it back to being kind of more normal. And this is the benefit of that. Yep. Were there any big surprises for you guys as you got into this quarter's report? Anything that jumped out as, holy cow, I didn't really see that coming. I, I actually, there was one area where I was surprised when I saw it, uh, because to me, it, it it somewhat contradicts what we're seeing out there. And that was the searches for warehousing and manufacturing jobs. And because, you know, we're still seeing a, uh, you know, difficulty obtaining and, uh, you know, attracting manufacturing employees. So it was good. I was glad to see that, you know, at least, you know, on the front end, searches are going up, which means that, you know, Hopefully people are looking for you know, jobs in manufacturing and distribution and warehouses, uh, but not quite seeing that, uh, you know, kind of you know, translate into, in, into an increase in employees. Yeah. One of the things that as a firm we do with Aprio is we tr follow what's going on with Google Trends because that's a good insight into where basically the psychology of an entire uh, society is. And looking at, well, what are people searching for when it comes to um, employment and, and job opportunities? And that's how we, we look at and see what's going on with those interested in factory jobs, what's going on with those interested in warehousing. If you think about mm -hmm. manufacturing and distribution. And those trends have continued to be pretty positive. More people are searching or those searches are more frequent. And that can only be a good thing if someone's running either a manufacturing company or distribution, knowing that the likelihood of finding that next candidate seems to be getting better and better. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I've heard, you know, in my industry context, 
that it's still not great to your point, Adam, it's not like people are just swimming in, yeah. in manufacturing employees now, but that the, they feel like the worst is over. They're not kind of just barely hanging on by their fingernails like they were maybe a year ago. Yeah, yeah. Jim, I, I would add to that. When you look at from big picture in the economy, we're seeing uh, things like initial jobless claims and the continuing claims. So basically people who got laid off for the first time uh, or those who continue to be laid off, we see those tracking marginally higher in a specific direction really over the last five, six weeks. And so that, that scarcity of labor is incrementally getting a little bit easier from a societal perspective, which will flow into manufacturing. Manufacturing tends to lag a little bit what's actually going on when it comes to the overall employment situation across the country. So more optimism for those who are looking for employees as we move forward. Yeah. Now, you guys also had a report. Um, one of your line items was about searches for manufacturing sustainability. How do you read that particular piece? Those are up as well, similar to the searching for jobs. Um, what, what is the indicator there for you? And this is a surprise given, um, I'll say how political, the idea of sustainability and often people associate e the term ESG with sustainability, they, they are somewhat different. But when we look at sustainability, what we've heard from a lot of our clients is that the supply chains, whether it's their customers or their communities or their suppliers, themselves are asking more about sustainable products and, and how they go about delivering those products in a way that reduces things like carbon footprint within, within products. And what we've seen is that those Google trends, again, are keep showing that it's an area of increasing interest for people out there. So even despite everything going on politically with the term ESG, the actual, those who have money on the line, who know that this can impact their business, this is becoming increasingly important. Yep. I think also with that, something to add is that I think you're going to see more and more larger companies requiring their vendors to, you know, keep track of their sustainability, mm -hmm. right? So if you're selling into a Walmart or Target, uh, you know, one of the large auto manufacturers, I think more and more you're going to see that they're requiring uh, that you have standards in place. It hasn't really hit the, the middle market yet, the types of clients that we're serving, uh, but I certainly see down the road that that is going it, to, it's going to happen. Yeah. We also see it with private equity firms that are increasingly being evaluated by their investors, their limited mm -hmm. partners, asking for the <clears throat> sustainability goals. And so for mid-market companies, as Adam alluded to, on one hand, it's going to be pressure because their customers are going to ask for it. But anyone who thinks about potentially selling their business, this is an area that will come up in due diligence. This is something they'll be asked about as well. And so to get ahead of that, this is something that is from a sustainability perspective, being prepared to answer those questions becomes increasingly important. Yeah. And, and I've always said manufacturers haven't give, given themselves enough credit for the sustainability work we've always done. You know, we're always looking to reduce costs and kind of get things right down as uh, low as we can on the production side. And that necessarily drives a good sustainability picture. So uh, to me, a lot of it's just going to be really building on that history that we've already established. Uh, I agree, Jim. If you think about it from a first principles perspective, in many ways, it's about how do you do more with less mm -hmm. and from yep. an efficiency perspective. And when you look at things about the history of whether it's lean management or other kind of manufacturing approaches um, and distribution approaches, for, it's, it's very much about how do we do as much as we can with as few inputs as possible. So I, I agree with you mm -hmm. wholeheartedly. Good deal. Well, if you if you back up then to kind of the 10,000 foot level um, for each of you, what's your one or two biggest takeaways overall from your latest report here? Go ahead, Simeon. Yeah. The big takeaway for me is that there are a lot of headlines out there about where the economy is, but the underlying part, especially for manufacturing distribution, is that things are likely to be getting better and continue getting better than where they were six months ago or 12 months ago. And if you're running uh, a manufacturing or a distribution business, you sort of have to be thinking, how do I be on offense, but also at the same time balance that with, we're not in a fast growing economy, we're, but we're in a, and, and the economy itself is actually slowing. The rate of growth is, is likely to slow as we look forward, mm -hmm. but it's not a bad economy. And it's not something where we're gonna go through a, a very material recession. We might have a mild recession, but we're not gonna have something where it's, like it was in 2008 uh, type of timeframe. So 
and you got to be thinking, okay, well, if I'm going to be expanding and if I'm going to be looking for that next opportunity to grab market share, what do I need to be putting in place from a resource perspective? What conversations do I need to have? What hiring do I need to think about? And that's really the, the, what we see from this getting better perspective when it comes to, to the manufacturing distribution economies. Okay. And I would just you know, echo what, what Simeon is saying and then add that you know, there, there are opportunities. And I keep hearing a lot from our clients about automation, right? And what mm -hmm. automation can do. And so, you know, the, the, the struggles that I think they've had over the last, you know, three, four years, and now kind of, as, as we said, kind of coming out of it, it's gotten companies thinking differently, right? How do I, how do I make sure that I'm competitive going forward? And so, you know, certainly lessons learned from, from the past. Yep. Yeah. Jim, the other thing I, I would highlight is that we've had some pretty significant differences that have really starting in the early stages of really impacting our economy now than where we were from that period, probably between 2000 and 2020. You know, things that we would highlight, we need the nearshoring and reshoring of a lot mm -hmm. of that manufacturing footprint, the reinvestment in infrastructure from Washington, the transition of what the energy footprint is going to look like over the next 10 or 20 years. And the fact that a lot of those facilities are coming out into red states, even though they're under the administration, that would be considered blue, right? So really you have a, a very different manufacturing environment looking forward. And then you add in things like Adam alluded to between automation, uh, the machine learning and AI, who, which we don't know how that's gonna impact things, but it clearly will be a part of the picture. It's a very different and in many ways exciting environment uh, relative to where I think manufacturing and distribution has been for, yeah. for call it 20 years. Yeah. And you know, we need to get the younger folks exactly what you just described, Simeon. It's exciting, it's different, and that's the message that manufacturers really need to get out. It's, it's not the manufacturing from 20, 30, 40 years ago. And, and there's just some great opportunity in, in to capitalize on it. Yeah, agreed. That's a message I've been hammering consistently for years now is that we unfortunately have not done our own best marketing for our world <laughs> in the manufacturing realm um, and, and getting that word to our youth who are coming up and uh, getting them excited about these careers that are on offer is, is to me, if you're not doing that and you're in manufacturing, you're failing at your job in, in some regard. Yeah. I want to dive a little into that automation and, and employment side. In hearing from people out there, do people understand that even if we do the best job that we can and we attract more of the youth coming into the job market, into the manufacturing world, we're still losing the baby boom. We're still going to be falling behind no matter if we knock that ball out of the park. Is that part of, you think, what's driving that interest in automation? Absolutely. I, I think they, they see it, they understand it. Uh, they look out there you know, on their, their manufacturing floors and they see a lot of, you know, older people and, and realize that things are going to have to change. Yep. And I think it's a combination of that. It's the combination of what I said before about how, you know, last three, four years, how tough things have been. And so, you know, companies are absolutely looking at things differently. I was uh, meeting with a client down in, in Noonan, Georgia, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And they're a great example of companies been around for over 100 years and they have got the automation bug and understand that for them to continue to compete for another 100 years, things have to change. They struggle to to attract and retain employees. And it's not because they're not a great company to work for. This is a, a company that refers to their uh, their employees as family, not not employees, because mm -hmm. they care about them that much. And yeah. but they realize that that, you know, things are, are going to have to change for them to continue to be competitive. And, and the data backs up what, what Adam is saying. So if you look at the participation rate in the economy in different age cohorts, if you look at between 24 and 54, roughly, that's back to where we were pre-COVID. If you look at the age group 55 and over, we are 2 or 3% below where we were pre-COVID. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you run the numbers, that's 2 to 3. It's about 2 million people that as an economy we're short that are 55 and older. older. And that age group actually tends to be amongst the most productive because they have all that knowledge and experience. Right. Yep. And so that impacts a, a company's productivity. So how do you essentially replace that? 
Excellent points. Um, as we look forward to the next quarter, based on the trends you've seen with the specifics here, are there any any ones in particular that manufacturers should be focused on, should be aware of, kind of in this near term headed into the new year? One that I gravitate to as, as a leading indicator of leading indicators is we go back to the ISM survey and we look at what are ISM new orders less, what are ISM inventories? And when you have that as a positive number, which essentially means you know new orders are coming in, so that's new business, new potential uh, bookings coming in. If that's greater than what the inventory is, that tends to say, okay, we're gonna be expanding or, or growing in the future. And we've seen that increase for four or five consecutive months now, that, that mm -hmm. data. So yeah. that has us pretty positive and continuing to monitor are the new orders outstripping essentially the, the growth in inventories. And Simeon, those new orders need to continue because that is one thing that we hear over and over again. Inventories are getting bloated and mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a result of you know, all those supply chain issues. Companies bought a lot of inventory for stock. And right. so, um, uh, you know, my fear is that if things do slow up, that is going to, you know, even exaggerate you know, the issue a little bit more. So hopefully, you know, is the trend that we're seeing in, the, in these numbers going in the right direction, start to eat away at some of these, these you know, existing inventories. Got it. Okay. So folks out there, you have the uh, wisdom to act upon there, things to think about. Uh, for Aprio in particular, you guys have been doing this for a couple of years. You're getting heavier and heavier into my world of manufacturing. Um, where do you go from here? Talking to Adam before we got on, sounds like there's a few more offerings out there. And are you going to be adding to that and jumping in even deeper in the manufacturing and distribution world? Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you and I were talking before, I'd mentioned that we we hired a gentleman named Kevin Claxon, and he is going to lead our manufacturing advisory services practice. So think about operational, uh, operational excellence, lean, six sigma. Um, and, you know, when, when, you know, as Aprios, we look, as I mentioned to you before, our goal is to be able to provide our clients uh, more than just the debits and credits, right? How do we help them grow? How do we help them, uh, you know, uh, you know, maintain their business at levels that are going to, you know, be prosperous for, you know, generations to come? And so this is just a, a natural evolution to what we're doing and, and, you know, advising our clients. Good deal. Simeon, anything to add? Uh, I like Kevin, <laughs> who's leading this up. <laughs> Kevin's an ex-Toyota uh, production systems guy. He, he's definitely oh, yeah. been through a lot of plants before, and so he really knows his stuff. So I'm excited to have him as a part of our team. Sounds like I need to meet Kevin. Yeah, you absolutely do. Yeah. You absolutely do. Good. The other thing, Jim, that, that we talked about is our 2023 Aprio National Manufacturing Survey uh, that we just did. Yep. Uh, that was released last month. And... Uh, in connection with that, we're doing these benchmark studies. And so we had, I think about, it was about 225 uh, participants to the survey. And so our clients and prospects and, and other companies that wanna contribute to that, that data, they can complete the survey. And then we could benchmark based on, you know, company size, location, sub-industry of where they stack up against their competitors. So we're, we're really excited about that, uh, that benchmarking tool that we have. Good deal. Any closing thoughts, guys? We're pretty much out of time here and to wrap it up, but uh, any anything you want to finish up with? I would just say that that it's uh, it's an exciting time to be in manufacturing. We do think better days are ahead for the reasons we've highlighted. As a firm, Aprio, we've been growing pretty significantly. Uh, now have a national footprint, and you know Adam's team continues to expand to help really serve clients' needs that seem to be continuing to grow as well. Good deal. Uh, yeah. I love the position that manufacturers are in. And uh, I mentioned that one company down in, in Noonan, Georgia, and they're a great example that manufacturing can exist in America. Uh, they're, they, they do it profitably. They care about their employees. And uh, I'm excited to, where the, to see where the manufacturing industry goes. And, and I'm, I'm really high on it and think great things are to come. Well, you're both singing my tune, obviously, That's my whole <laughs> career here. Um, those of you guys out there in manufacturing, certainly I, this had to be extremely informative. And, uh, you know, if you hear things that Aprio can help you with, reach out to them and, uh, they'll be more than happy to do that. Adam Beckerman, Simeon Wallace, thanks for being with us today. Thank thanks. you very much. Thanks, Jim. Enjoyed it. Absolutely. And of course, all of you out there, 
Thank you for joining us. This, I think, was probably the single most informative episode when it comes to hardcore manufacturing stuff that we've ever done. And so while every episode is informative, we're here every Tuesday. Tune in. I can't promise they're all going to be this informative, but they're going to be plenty informative. So join us every week. We'll be here. Thanks again. Thanks for tuning in to Manufacturing Talks with Jim Vinosky. Watch for new episodes dropping every Tuesday. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe.